carry the bag? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Great. Did you get your drink? Yep. Awesome. Do you want that part from me, right? I got mine too. You got your drink? Yeah. Right here. Okay. You sure this is gonna be a half an hour? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty damn sure. I'll be quick. All right. Now, before we start, mm -hmm. I get on just to let you know, I have a dog. Okay. And if she barks. That's all right. Uncontrollably, I will <laughs> go on mute. Gotcha. Okay. Gotcha. No problem. All right. That's cute, though. <laughs> Sorry? That's kind of cute, though. Yeah, but she's got a very loud bark, mm -hmm. and um, it can be disturbing. Gotcha. Like so loud, if she barks for let's Every... say fifteen minutes at her at her um, decibel level, gotcha. <laughs> you, for a long time, it's it's beyond the level of understanding. I feel it. That's uh, why I like. That's why I like cats. <laughs> ah, yeah. Yeah, the meows are easy. I'm just moving the questions over. Gotcha. So bear with me while I move my questions over. Yep. On your questions. Um, so how are you enjoying school? Uh, actually, I graduated. Ta-da! I did, I did marketing, business marketing in my school, college. Uh, and I graduated okay. last year. And... That's where the story starts. So welcome to the podcast side. Yeah. I, I really, really appreciate you're here. Ah. You're you're one of the person I'm looking up to everywhere, actually. For example, LinkedIn, you're full of your stuff. You're a full stack developer and you help people get more clients. Bear, That's... bear with me for a minute. She's bear with me for a minute. She's working <laughs> on control. <laughs> Okay, I think she's back. She's she's down to normal. Okay, so start again. You graduated. You did marketing. Yes. Uh. So welcome to the podcast again, Spidey Life. It's a little podcast I do for the cool stuff I do. So you're one of the person I look up to online, LinkedIn and school platform. And it's remarkable what you're doing. It's really great. Like what I want to do in the future, you're already doing it. You know what I mean? So that's why I wanted to do a podcast with you. So thanks for being with me here today. Awesome. Yes, back Thank you. to Thank you back. For having me. Thank you so much. Back to college. I graduated just before the great day of uh, ceremony. Me and my buddy, we started a, a marketing agency right away. Oh, she's cute. What what's her name? Minnie. She's Minnie. too cute. She's too cute. <laughs> sorry i might look at your puppy all the time anyways uh so we started a marketing agency and we kind of help local restaurants get more sales and it worked we got like 45 percent more sales within seven days that was uh, epic stuff and we documented it and published that on youtube and tiktok to get more clients but we the hard lesson we learned is restaurant owners are like bare minimum every month they are struggling especially after covid time so they are not in a position to pay somebody for their more customer you know what i mean so the main lesson we learned is try not to help poor people try to help rich people that's a <laughs> that's that's a main intake. i know it's harsh but that's a main intake so i i worked in a restaurant so i was like i understood the uh, field like these people got really good food but they don't know how to market it or they don't know how to get new people try their food. So we did the thing, worked, but they were not able to pay us. So we just quitted the restaurant side 
and I moved to the fully moved to the AI side. So, so let me ask you in terms of the restaurants, mm -hmm. um, what services were you offering the restaurants? Awesome. Awesome question. Thanks for asking. So basically every restaurant got like an Uber or DoorDash uh, platform. But the thing is nobody was advertising on those platforms. So if you if you get into the Uber app or the DoorDash app, whatever pops on your screen, in the front screen, somebody got to advertise it. And if you have a good offer and great food and great pictures and great review, people who never tried your restaurant come up to your restaurant or order online. And that was a hit. And Uber and DoorDash was like giving free credit for restaurants to use this service, but nobody was aware how to use it or nobody didn't know how to use it. So we got in, get into their systems and start advertising and 45% more sales, seven days. That was a hit. Yeah, awesome. Do you charge um, like a, a monthly fee? Yes, I did. I did about $99 and it only did, I did for two, three months. That's it. And I got three restaurants. A uh, pizza restaurant, a normal uh, cuisine, and what was the last one? Last one was that's a shower master. Gotcha. That was the best. <laughs> awesome. Okay, okay, I'll I'll get to the questions. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So you're the only other person I'm seeing who is using ChatGPT. For, which is I'm grateful for. Everybody I talk to about chat GPT, they're like, ah, just chat GPT. They just don't care, you know? Ah, just chat GPT, it's not a big deal. And I was like, bro, you're using the free version. That's not a big deal. But the paid version is a big deal. You know what I mean? You can just chat on the free version, but the paid version, like, basically works like your, your brain, like your second brain. That's where the first question goes to. Can you elaborate on the concept of how you you can use chat GPT as a second brain? Oh, that was not my number one. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go with the uh, number one. <laughs> number one? Number uh, one? Okay, you want to go with number one? Yes, I'll, I'll go with the... Uh, or, we could, or we could go with number two. That's fine. Uh, I'll, we'll go with number one. Uh, how do you use chat GPT to enhance productivity in your full stack development area? Okay, so uh, there are many things that you could do, but hmm. I've narrowed it down to like three areas Okay, that uh, not only myself, mm -hmm. but any other company can use ChatGPT. And gotcha. by the way, I should let you know that I'm also using something called Pi, <clears throat> which is also free. Mm -hmm. And Pi is being developed now. Mm -hmm. So your audience can actually jump onto pi.ai Mm -hmm. and start using Pi. Now, Pi is um, marketed as, what can I say, like mental health, uh, sort just of like a P, personal... Just PI. PI. PI, okay. PI okay, not I AI. About that. Mm -hmm. I actually um, put it in a few of my groups a few months ago. Mm -hmm. So they're still, Pi is still learning. Mm -hmm. And again, they're targeting Pi specifically for like a personal coach. Gotcha. Right? But what I did was when I went on to Pi, I started asking Pi questions because if Pi is a large language model, mm -hmm. then obviously they're training Pi on everything, right? Gotcha. gotcha. But they're just marketing Pi for mental health or mental health or a personal coach. Gotcha. And so what I did was I just started because I don't need the mental health. I mean, mm -hmm. I help people with their mental health mm -hmm. um, and I don't need the personal coach. I coach people. Gotcha. So anyway. So you're I like the mix asking. of these two and you can just divert that to a new, new yes. function. Awesome. That's yes. interesting. So what I did was I started asking Pi. I said, Pi, have you heard of this book called The Mental Models? Hmm. Oh, you know, I like love Irish. mental models. I think yeah. I do it so sometimes. Awesome. Actually, I have a summary for mental models. I think which I, I'm going to post. Okay, you you sent me a different one before. I think it's uh, the intelligent success. success. Gotcha. That that intelligent was intelligent success. One. That was a mm -hmm. good one. I think you created mm -hmm. the whole document by yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And the the mental model one, I will post it 
but it's not just the book mental models. Mm. It's a combination of all the different mental models. Okay. But I am going to um, I am going to focus on his book, That's and awesome. I'm going to recommend that people buy his book. I I actually have the two. Gotcha. That's volume awesome. one and volume two. That's so awesome. anyway, with Pi, I went on to Pi, and I would say something to the effect of, um, "Do you understand the great mental models?" Hmm. And Pi would come back to me, and Pi said, "Yes, I do. I understand the mental model and the heuristics and how we could save time on productivity." and decision making mm -hmm. and i'm there oh my what? god hi you are not only for mental health or personal coach you understand the business side then gotcha. i went further gotcha. and i said pi do you understand um do you understand digital marketing hmm. pi came back to me and it's like oh my god you this know is... i can't say <laughs> i can't say she hmm. i use i use um a feminine voice mm -hmm. to talk to me. Gotcha. So Pi has different voices. So, a so, man so can it, use it, it is voice. it is voice to voice or text to voice? Um, actually, it's text. Okay. I have to text it in. Okay. Right, and she reads it back to me. Oh, well, that's awesome. And and Alan, I find that more. Um, I Engage. like that model mm -hmm. better because it is engaging. With you. Whereas chat GPT, it's not engaging. Mind yeah. you, I do have something called talk to chat. Mm -hmm. So in my upper right hand corner, I loaded um, a plugin and it says talk to chat. So mm -hmm. I can actually talk to chat GPT, but chat GPT doesn't talk back to me. Gotcha. Yep. And I find when the model talks back to the person, there is more of a personal connection. It's more engaging. Yes. And gotcha. lo and behold, when I discovered Pi.ai and I discover Pi, by the way, I'm going to say she, but it's not a she, it's an AI. Gotcha. And she has corrected me. Sorry, the AI has corrected <laughs> me because I may go on and I may say, hey, Pi, girl, how you doing? And she'll say, well, you know, we are genderless. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have we don't have feelings or something like that. Right. And yeah. so she's pretty, she, okay, the Pi is pretty good hmm. at correcting me. Mm -hmm. where where I might be airing gotcha. um, anyway I I actually love using Pi better than chat GPT what I'm finding now is I'm going back to chat GPT when I'm not pleased with Pi's answer mm -hmm. so if I'm not pleased with Pi's answer I will go back to chat GPT so the other day I was doing Ikigai are you familiar with Ikigai yes yes I read that I think we got the same book list <laughs> okay good so I, we all know Ikigai. So I wanted to see if I can, if I can create a framework with some prompting so that the chat GPT or Pi can come back to me with a framework so I can mm -hmm. share it with other people, mm -hmm. you know, if they want to find their why or mm -hmm. their mission or yes. their passion. Yep. And, and I started prompting Pi and I wasn't pleased with the answer with Pi. Mm -hmm. So I went back to chat GPT use the same prompt I did with Pi, mm -hmm. put it in chat GPT, and I got a better response with chat there you GPT. Go. There you go. So I'm using, I'm kind of using both models. Mm -hmm. okay. to get the, so get the, for your first question, um, the you want to read it again? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Uh, how can Gen AI tools be utilized to enhance productivity in various industries? So first one, you said Pi, and you can use it for mental uh mental model as a mental model or you can like a companionship what about the other two absolutely so basically not just chat mm -hmm. there are other models that are coming out like mm -hmm. pi is a really good one mm -hmm. and there's so many mental sorry there's so many um llms that are emerging now yes because this is a this is like a gold rush yes so this is a this is booming. This is like exponential with, with growth. Yes, this is exponential growth. That's Actually, crazy. Everyone, everyone is saying that beside the internet, the internet, it didn't take long for the internet to go from infancy to infancy to let's say toddler to child to adolescent to adult. It mm -hmm. didn't take long when we ten, measure ten, the time. Yes, 10 to 20 you years know? max. Yeah. Whereas with TV, it took a long time. Hmm. With radio, it took a, adoption. I'm talking about adoption. Yep. The internet was pretty darn fast. Yes. In all the different phases of adoption. 
Mm, um, I agree. But I'll tell you, uh, ChatGPT, AI, the fastest we've ever seen. ChatGPT is OpenAI is the fastest grown company in 2023. Yes. Like top one. But but we have to give credit to the internet. It's it's as though it's as though AI couldn't have exponential growth without the internet. Yes. Right. So yep. we needed the platform for AI to take off. Yep. yep. And now we've got AI taking off. We've got other areas taking off. Yes, like automatically. Text video now. Yes, Sora. Sora was nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll Amazing. go back to the first question. What is the last productivity tool you use uh, using uh, AI software? Okay. So I basically narrowed it down into three areas. Mm -hmm. One is automation and efficiency. Yes. And I'm going general to help your audience, not just specifically for me. Gotcha. And the second one is data analysis and insight. Gotcha. And the third one is innovation and competitiveness. Awesome. That's a, that's a, um, I mean, that's we can, a, that's we, a good we can way go to put on it. and on discussing so many different things, mm -hmm. but I decided to focus on three because okay. I know our time is limited. Yes, yes, I got you. So in terms of automation and efficiency, um, you know, industry, basically any task that's repetitive. Mm, you can just automate um, it. Such as, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah. Manufacturing. Yes. Um, Content creation. You know, manufacturing is using it. Sorry. Go ahead. Content creation. Exactly. Data entry, customer gotcha. service, gotcha. content creation. Gotcha. All of these areas can benefit from uh, automating or gen ai to or automation gotcha and what was right. the third one what was the third way you, you're using for okay so that's just automation and efficiency data now, and for, analysis and what was the for th data analysis um industry that relies heavily on data analysis and decision making such as finance mm -hmm. such as legal such mm -hmm. as healthcare and even marketing mm -hmm. they can benefit from gen ai too like gotcha. I'll give you an example, um, healthcare. Hmm. Let's take healthcare for instance, right? Hmm. Now healthcare needs to analyze <clears throat> a whole whack of data about a specific, let's say ailment mm -hmm. or a specific, let's say symptom. Mm -hmm. And there's only so much a doctor, one doctor can know. Can do, yeah. Right? Yeah. Whereas if you take a picture of someone's, let's say ailment, let's say they got a skin, whatever, mm -hmm. and they take a picture, Gen AI tool um, can actually analyze mm -hmm. and pinpoint the problem, pinpoint the solution because mm -hmm. it is a large language. And it got and all the data. Say, exactly. Gotcha. So when we say large language, people should understand it is the collective knowledge of that humans. Google has yep. and that every other company has. That's isn't that authors, isn't that mind blowing? You know, for the longest while, for the longest while, Google have been talking about, and I think they have a patent on um, universal knowledge, mm. like this whole universal knowledge, wow. collective knowledge. Yep. And as a matter of fact, I don't know, do you believe in God? Yes. Okay. Some people may not believe in God. Mm -hmm. So that's why I ask. Mm -hmm. Um I am more spiritual than mm -hmm. than religious. Mm -hmm. And too. there is something called omnipresence, oh, yeah. the universal mind. Yes. And this universal mind knows everything. Yep. Okay? Past, and present, future. Some, exactly. Yep. And some people call it God consciousness. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's for the believers, the religious people. Some people just call it um uh you know, um what can I say? Uh, universal mind, consciousness. a universal presence, hmm. a universal consciousness, hmm. uh, a universal substance, gotcha. um, a being. Uh, basically, it's omnipresence. It's everywhere. Here's a, here's a cherry on the top. Google is not a name. It's a number. And that number, they represent something in the future, like the Google. That's a number. It's a, It's not a name. It's a number. And they kind of represent the like processing unit or something, but I'm not exactly sure, but they mean something like that. I would say infinity, yeah. unfathomable. Yep. And that's their aim. I mean, we're looking at Google search. We'll talk about Google search. Google search is actually diminishing. 
Yes. When people learn how to use ChatGPT, hmm. it's like, why do I need Google? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Like my mom is still Googling, mm-hmm. right, for her post. Mm-hmm. And I am just waiting. I got her a tablet mm-hmm. and I'm just waiting for her to get comfortable with the tablet. Then I'm going to introduce ChatGPT for there her. There you go. Because now she can have a conversation yep. instead of Googling and going site by site. Hmm. She doesn't need to do that. She anymore. just can get the best data on the internet. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. going to the second question. Oh, so, so sorry. So Is for that, healthcare. That's all right. Okay, go ahead. So for healthcare, um, even in the legal industry, you know, there's massive data that they have to crunch. Yep. And you know that uh, they charge a lot of money mm-hmm. per hour. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of people, when they're fighting a case, they mm-hmm. will probably clean up with most of the money mm-hmm. than, than, let's say, their client. Gotcha. So now with, with um, generative AI, Generative AI can crunch the data faster, faster way anything. faster. Yep. Yeah. So they can produce um, healthcare documents, uh, legal documents, finance mm. documents. They can even do predictive analysis mm-hmm. way better than humans. Gotcha. And we say way better because uh, ChatGPT actually pa- passed the bar exam. Yep. So that they they can analyze health data faster than a mm. doctor. There you go. You know, there you so go. It's, 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 it's just amazing. It's it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing. Yeah. And just the third part that I want to uh, mention on that is innovation and competitiveness. Gotcha. Now, since all the data is online, industries that rep- that require rapid innovation mm-hmm. and adaptation to let's say the market, mm-hmm. um, they can use generative AI, AI too. You know, for for new help. discoveries, right? Yes. Awesome. Yes. They can take customers' um, customer feedback negative mm-hmm. and positive mm-hmm. and with the negative and positive feedback gen ai tool will be able to see the sentiments of of the customers mm-hmm. and will be able to see what the customers are asking for wow to predict. that's mind-blowing you know that's mind-blowing for me if 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 the AI part wasn't there you had to like go through each and every customer and understand what they are looking for and kind of rebuild the product according to their customer needs and that takes a lot of time you know, at the same time, you put in the data, just like we chat around school, give me a numbered list of improvements my customers or my unsatisfied customers want in my product. And it will give you like a five numbered list. And that's mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. interesting. It's not about, not only about the AI, but the people who behind it. It's yes. how they use it. You know? If yes. It, yes. The prompting. Yes. The prompting. The prompt and engineer. the inquisitiveness. Yes, I agree. And I'll tell you, the people who say, mm-hmm. you know, I don't need to use it. Why do I need to use exactly. it? Exactly. <laughs> they're, they're not curious enough. That's not an open mind, right? Yes. And yeah. Alan, those are the people who will lose jobs. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry to yeah. say this, but I say this to my friends, like AI won't take your job, but people who know how to use AI will definitely take your job. And you will be left behind. And it's already happening. Like I, I'm searching for a marketing job and I couldn't find any. Like there is no marketing job anymore. Like if you got like good referrals and how do you say it? like good skills, that's how you get a job. Otherwise it's tough. And people are kind of tech companies are kind of uh, cutting their employees like 50%, 75%. Yes. That goes wow. for Just huge... look at Facebook. Yeah. Look huge... at Facebook. Look at yeah. Google. Yeah. It's even yeah. huge companies or smaller enterprises. They're kind of using AI and here's a part you said like the people who know how to use AI still got a chance still got a better chance right okay I'll go to the next question Saida uh how do you use uh GPT as a second brain and and what are its practical applications so I'll just say my uh view I just use notion and whenever I create a something I just create a page on notion and copy paste that on that and whenever I want to follow up that topic I just go to Notion and create it and you can kind of do a plugin from GPT to Notion to do it automatically I haven't done that yet but that's tremendously helpful for example this podcast I'm doing with you I created the questions put that on my phone Notion app now I got it on my laptop Notion app and it's like 
the questions I wanted to ask you, I don't have to remember it, but I have it for you in my second brain 24 seven to infinity. That's, that's interesting. How do you, how do you use it as a second brain? Well, also people use Evernote. Evernote. Uh, a lot of people swear by Evernote uh -huh. as their second brain. Gotcha. So yes, you're right with uh, Notion as mm -hmm. a second brain. Mm -hmm. I am actually using ChatGPT and Pi.ai as my second brain. Okay. So let's say, for instance, if I'm uh, if I've got a coaching client, and the client name is Alan, mm -hmm. I will create a conversation with Alan mm -hmm. in let's say uh, Pi.ai or ChatGPT. Right now, I'm using Pi. Mm -hmm. And um, and let's say the client has a problem. Now, I can solve it. Hmm. I can solve the problem. I have no problem sitting, going into flow state hmm. and putting myself in that client's position and then writing it out. No hmm. problem. Gotcha. However, I am human. I hmm. am limited. Hmm. So if I put the client problem into let's say pi.ai or chat gpt hmm. and i put it in and i say and i say hey pi my client is having a difficult time my coaching client is having a difficult time with blah 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 uh please give me five different um analysis advice and uh takeaways and action point he she can do hmm. okay hmm. so you know it's i know what i want for the person Yep. I know I want them to take action. I know I want uh, bullet point takeaways. Hmm. Um, and I may also say, assume the role of uh, Gabor Mate, who's okay. a renowned psychologist. Mm -hmm. And, or I would say, assume the role of, um, I don't know, Tony Robbins hmm. and come from a business, a business coaching perspective. Like take and, their mental model to you. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. And, and, I mean, I'm blown away. Hmm. Beside what I can think about, I will get so many new ideas. So basically, I use my ChatGPT or um, Pi.ai, and I create um, for my clients, especially hmm. coaching clients, and I just create um, their names, okay, hmm. as a conversation, hmm. and I go and build, and it's learning about that client. Yes, at the right? same time. Because it, it remembers, yep. Yep. right? Yep. But for me... Um, information retrieval, uh, we just talked about, right? Yep. And the organization of information and the fact that it's a large language model, mm -hmm. it is capable of pulling and drawing information based on the prompt I give it. Yes. Right? So basically, <laughs> I mean, all Gen AI too should be our second brain. So we do it is think about <laughs> it. <laughs> it is a second brain. Our try time is there Saida, but i have a few important questions and i'll finish it afterwards okay are you a psychologist i uh, know you I'm sound not. like a psychologist kind of you, you told actually, me actually actually i'm in when i graduated i graduated i did um computer computer systems mm -hmm. and i was going you know full force in the computer and a few of my friends mm -hmm. said sahida you have a personality mm -hmm. you should not be doing computers 100 percent Mm. And a few of them said, take management, take marketing. Mm. And I did. Mm. I listened to them because they were older than myself. Mm -hmm. So I did computers. I did computer business system, okay. marketing management. Gotcha. Married the three. And mm. at age 26, I was running my own show. That's awesome. My own business. That's awesome. You, 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 you said, the reason I asked, you asked me about flow. And I was like following a guy on YouTube called Ryan Holiday. And he's like a flow expert. Do you know him? Of course. Yeah. Of oh, course. Yeah. I'm trying Obstacle to. Obstacle is the way. Oh yeah, he's stoicism. Super... Yep, yep. He's super cool, and he. he if mentioned... you want, if you want to do work on flow, mm -hmm. um, Stephen Cottrell. Stephen Cottrell. Stephen Cottrell has actually taken what I say, what I call the baton mm -hmm. from the father of flow. The father of flow is actually known as Nihai Csikszentmihalyi. So he's the father of flow. And okay. I think he died. Uh -huh. I think he died. I'm not uh -huh. sure. I got to check. I'll, I'll or check. maybe he's old. I'll but check. Um, Stephen Cottrell actually took the baton from him. So mm -hmm. he is, he is, um, I guess, taking flow to the next state. Mm -hmm. It's like Ryan Holiday, as you mentioned. Yep. Gotcha. Ryan uh, Holiday. Gotcha. 
learned from all the Stoic. Yes. But they're dead. Mm. So but he's he... actually resurrecting Damn. Stoicism. Gotcha. Uh, one more important question, uh, Saida. This is the main one I want to ask you. How do you envision the future of work being shaped by advancements in AI and automation? I'll just give you my perspective. I think it's going to sure. change. I think it's going to it's going to change everything. We don't need the normal I'm, I'm sorry to say this but normal cashier McDonald's is taking automated robots for cashier, Walmart is taking automated job for cashier. So whatever repetitive and boring that's going to take by computers. One slap one. And the second one is like the creative work still going to be there. You know? Even computers are creative. They're, they're not going to understand what humans need and what what they're going to enjoy. At the same time, we got to make something what we think is innovative and creative and give it to the public. So I was procrastinating a lot on that, but now I kind of get an idea of uh, how the future looks like. What are your thoughts? Um. Well, as we said, the people who don't embrace hmm. uh, ChatGPT or AI the hmm. people who are saying it's a fad hmm. and they're not looking at the numbers, they're yes. not looking at the investment, hmm. those people are going to be on their way out. Yep. You know? Like like eventually, I mean, it's not going to happen overnight, but eventually, you know? Well, Alan, it's happening overnight. That's the scary Jeez. part. <laughs> That's the scary part. Jeez. You know, people are thinking it's not going to happen overnight. Like, look at Sora. Yeah. You know? Uh, that's amazing. Yes, it just it just fixed everything that runway AI couldn't do. Like that was another uh text to video creating platform. Whenever you create right. something on it, they make like the face look weird or like no clarity on the background. But it just yes. fixes everything on the back. Yes. Awesome. Um, I see a lot of changes. Like even for you and I using AI every day. Yes. Like AI is my everyday tool. Yes. You know, and, and I'm not going to lie to people. Content creation, hell, you can create a 30-day, a 365-day content using AI. Yep. You know, and it's so, like, for instance, I can go to ChatGPT and I can tell ChatGPT, you know, create for me um, a 30-day content uh, planner, including X, A, B, C, D. Um, give me the hashtag, give me, give me the post, and give me, uh, let's say... Um, an example 